Right now I'm walking on the Houghton Highway. This is the border, the northern border of, can you see me all right? This is the northern border of Brisbane. And in this walk, I'm gonna be walking all the way from here to the very southern boundary of Brisbane, which is at Browns Plains. Beautiful morning here, that's Redcliffe over there. But yeah, I'm walking all the way from the very top of Brisbane to the very bottom of Brisbane. And away we go. So it's time now I think to put the umbrella up because we are in magpie season now and for those of you watching overseas who aren't aware in the spring in many parts of Australia the native Australian magpie can become very aggressive and can protect its uh, nest from any perceived threats now that means if you're walking or jogging or cycling underneath they can sometimes swoop down now usually it's just a they fly close to you give you a fright uh, but sometimes some people have been injured and on very rare occasions, some people have have died as a result of either falling or stumbling or crashing into something. All right, I'll show you what I've done with the umbrella. Put that down there. So I got a can of white spray paint and sprayed some eyes onto the top of this umbrella. And then I got a Sharpie, big, big texture and colored in some, some dark eyes onto it. The main thing about carrying the umbrella is that it's, it's awkward trying to juggle everything because not only have I got the weight of the backpack, I'm holding the umbrella and then trying to handle the cameras and then look where I'm going so I don't walk in front of cars or anything. I don't know if you can hear it, but these shoes are really squeaking. I got that for the next 50 kilometers. So I've got the umbrella, I've got a hat, I'm wearing sunnies. I really don't know what else to do to protect myself against magpies. Now the best thing you can do to avoid magpies is to stay home and then you'll be safe. But then it's such a beautiful day, you want to get out. But all this protection, it feels like a suit of armor I've got on. Going to battle with the magpies. I pray that religion goes away and never comes back. I'm approaching Braun Street now, I'm gonna make a left turn onto it that heads towards the city and then I think Braun Street becomes Sandgate Road and I'll follow that all the way down to Bowen Hills and all those sort of places. It's bright and sunny and beautiful as you can see singing in the sun. What's that? What is it? North Boondle train station. Okay, so that's where I am. I wonder how long I've been walking for. I'll take a look. I started at about 8.15 on the Houghton Highway and it's now 9.30. So that's just an hour and a quarter from there to North Boondle. It's not the most exciting part of the world here. This backpack's getting heavy. I think the main thing that's heavy in there is the laptop and the power cords and the adapters and battery chargers and all that sort of thing. Just looking at Nudgee College now, that place is enormous. I've never, I think I've driven past once or twice, but I've never, you know, I've never actually walked past it and had a look. Look at the size of that. Wow, Catholics have a lot of money. Just leaving behind Nudgee College and I can actually see the city now from up here. My first view of the city on this walk. 
and the land is getting much, much lower down there. I didn't realise just how high up it was here. Don't know what the name of the bridge is, but apparently this is Zillman Waterholes. Never heard of it. Passing by another station now, and it's Virginia Station. Moving right over the top of it. Well, the land is certainly getting higher now. Really feeling the heat now. It's only about 24 degrees, but it feels a lot hotter. Anyway, making my way south, still on Sandgate Road. Just coming up to the intersection with Hamilton Road, I think it is. Obviously, on with the intersection of um, you go through. Uh, intersection of Sandgate Road and from up here I can see Mount Gravatt. I wouldn't have thought I could have seen that far from up here. Let's show how high up we are here. Ooh. What I've got to do now is find Buckland Street, uh, I think it's just coming up on the right because there's a tunnel here. I'm approaching Nunda and the Sa Sandgate Road actually goes in a different way the, originally. There's, um, it follows a different course. It, it's more to the, uh, to the west, if I remember correctly. So I need to find how to get onto that because there's the tunnel coming up ahead and I'm pretty sure I can't go through a tunnel on foot. Just walking up this hill here near the tunnel, I've seen that the name of it is George Bridges Tunnel. George Bridges Tunnel. Maybe they should have just found a bridge somewhere and called it George Bridges Bridge. This stone was the step of the original Nunda State School erected in 1865. Wow. Just beautiful buildings, really well made and they look great today. They, it's an older style, but one that's always gonna be beautiful. Oh great, more Catholics. All right, I think I've got to go back the other way. Just want to go and take a look at that big uh, church there. And what is this? This is the something to do with that MacKillop woman. Mary MacKillop College. There we go. My faith is my light. Nunda's really fascinating. I've never ever looked around here before. And I'm tempted to now, but I've got to keep moving. So hopefully if the information is correct, this is leading towards the original course of Sandgate Road. Whether it is or not, doesn't really matter. I don't have to stay on Sandgate Road. It's just the most direct route to get to the city. But I tell you what, it's just nice to get away from the traffic. just where that bridge is that I walked across there or somewhere near here was where Sandgate Road originally crossed over this creek here which is just down there beautiful park here very low-lying ground here now I've got to find Jackson Street wherever that is so now I'm on Jackson Road and I think this is Clayfield There's a convenience store up ahead. I've got to get some more water. I've nearly finished my bottle. Uh, it was a two litre bottle of water. I've nearly finished it, so I better get some more. So I've got another bottle of water. Had some more of a protein bar. And continue on my way. So I'm still following the old Sandgate Road, which is now I'm on Morrison Road and that'll go on to Norman Parade and so on and so on, back down to Sandgate Road. And another train station. 
That one is, don't know, can't see it from here. Eagle, Eagle Junction Station, there it is, the sign kind of gave it away. All right, just past the train station and I found this beautiful old house across the road. It seems to be aged care apartments. Wow, that is beautiful. Gee, that's a nice house. Look at this. Today's a little bit differently because I'm not wearing my usual uh, hiking, walking shoes. I'm wearing my jogging shoes. This is, this is them. And I only use these for jogging, but I thought, well, they're so damn comfortable. I'll give them a try for a long distance walk. And they're, they're terrific. Coming to the end of Bonnie Avenue and back onto Sandgate Road. Like. Going downhill a little bit now, so that's a relief. A lot of uphill before. A couple of old houses I've just found here. Um, I think I'm at the end of Clayfield, getting closer to... I have no idea what I'm getting close to, but across the road, look. Two old houses, both boarded up. Exactly the same design by the looks of it. Albion. I'm in Albion. Just having a little look at this old shop here on the corner of, what is it, Birkbeck Street and Sandgate Road. This is, it looks to be about 1920s or 1930s. The beautiful tile work that's down there. Uh, the moulding, which is still, still up there as well. Absolutely beautiful. We're on the other side of the look. It's a very, very old house. Just there. A lot, like, virtually the last house in this area, because it's all apartments now. Quiet road here, this road with absolutely no traffic on it. It's still Sandgate Road. That's quite incredible. That S Sandgate Road actually finishes right here, just here. That's where Sandgate Road finishes. There's a little quiet back street in a mostly industrial area. There's a few houses there, but that great road ends right there. I was going to get lunch at the Breakfast Creek Hotel, but there's about 50,000 people there. So, as lovely as it looks, and what a beautiful day, and a wonderful place to have lunch, I think I'll keep walking. There's somewhere across Breakfast Creek there. Uh, Mercedes Benz, they've got a cafe. Go and have a look. I took a look at that Mercedes Benz cafe thing that they've got there, and it wasn't really a great menu. Uh, the setting's very nice, but yeah, just like chicken pie and croissant and things like that. It's, I'm sure it's tasty enough, but it's kind of hoping for something a little healthier. Approaching the intersection of Anne and Brook Street, this is Anne Street just here. And many years ago, I worked for a water filtration company 
right here. The building is now gone. I was there for just a few years. I was a technician. Me, a technician. I can't even change a light bulb. So passing through the valley, and there's still a few very old buildings left, despite all the massive development. There's a few old ones still remaining. This is the place, Capri by Fraser. Here we go. Just gotta find the front door. Hello. Hi, I've made a booking for tonight. Certainly a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Take the mask off. It'll do for tonight, but it's not quite as, uh, well, you know, and it is a bit on the small side, considering it's supposed to be the studio premiere. It's, uh, anyway, made it halfway through the journey. You can't see me. <laughs> How the hell do I turn this light off? Um, the other one's off over there. You can't see it. It's in the dark, but this one here, what do I do? There's no, there is literally no switch for it. There's no switch. Everything else is switched off. This one here. Oh my God, I did it. Oh, now I can go to bed. Good night. Leaving the city, day two of the walk. I'm gonna go across the Goodwill Bridge and um, through, where am I going through? I'll probably be sticking mainly to Bow Desert Road. Only a couple of k's out of the city and already I've had to put the umbrella up there's a magpie just uh, flew across it didn't swoop me it was going over that way towards the school but uh, there's a lot of big trees around here so I guess I'll have this now for about the next seven hours it's the old Boggo Road jail across the road there when we first moved to Brisbane from Sydney I remember seeing armed guards up there when it used to be a prison. See the uh, the guards with rifles patrolling around. Paved the moon. Good film. Passing through Annerley now. I used to live here years ago. I lived here for about four years, I think, just down on Walpine Street. And this is 
Ipswich Road. Uh, I put the umbrella away because this is a really built up area. There's no big trees, so I think I should be alright for a while. I don't get this sign. For the safety and security of our staff, no mask permitted in this store. So does that mean that they don't want you to wear a mask in here? The Yoronga Memorial Park is just behind me there. From this point here, you can see how the land is sloping away. Uh, the further south I go, that whole flat area out there used to be, all of it was called Cooper's Plains. Now Cooper's Plains is just confined to one suburban area, but it was, uh, it was open. I'm now approaching the turnoff from Ipswich Road onto Bow Desert Road. And I'm pretty sure I follow that. I mean, that's Bow Desert Road all the way to, to the end of my journey down at Browns Plains. In the distance there, you can see Tui Forest. You know, I reckon Maruka's a really nice place. I don't think I've ever been here before. And it's, it's really high up here. You can see way out to the mountains. You can see Flinders Peak in the distance. Much quieter, considering Bow Desert Road goes through it. It doesn't really seem mega busy and crazy and noisy. All the years I've lived in Brisbane, I've never actually been through Maruka. I just stopped off for a couple of minutes to check the, the map. It says that I'm, even though that's Bow Desert Road, this is actually Bow Desert Road. And it goes sort of up and around that way. How quickly an environment changes. It was only like 15 minutes or so ago, I was up in Maruka and it was really lovely and some nice houses. It's quite a high up area. Uh, some nice views and everything. Anyway, now I'm in the, uh, flat industrial areas. Look for trains. Well that's easy, there's a train line up ahead, you'll see them there. There, that was easy, there's a train. There's an old train line just here, I don't know if this is used anymore. Looks in good condition. Just trying to negotiate how to get around this part of Bow Desert Road here, that's the overpass. It looks like I can go down that way. I think I can go that way and that'll take me back onto, onto Bow Desert Road itself because at the moment I've just been going through these back streets of this industrial area. Waiting for the gates to open, there we go. Walking through this area here at, uh, at Cooper's Plains over there, I think, reminds me very much of Sandgate Road, south of Nudgee College, where it, the ground, you know, the landscape gets very flat and it's all industrial and very busy and the road just seems to go on forever. This is just like that area, but here on the south side. Clouds rolling in. See the city in the background as well. You won't be able to see it with this camera. This is an action camera, so you can't zoom or anything with it. 
So if ever I need to try and zoom in on something a little, I have to use my phone, but I can't be bothered getting it out and, and doing it. Oh, all right, there you go. I think that's Flinders Peak out there in the, in the distance there. Certainly thirsty, there's a bus stop just up the hill. I'm gonna stop off and uh, have a good drink of water and rest my feet for a bit. They are getting quite sore now. There we go, it's quick. past the Callum Vale Hotel. Uh, in fact, that's it right there. I'm walking on an old road here, which is quite possibly the original Bow Desert Road. And I'm glad it is still here because there's no footpaths. At least I don't think so on the, on the main road there. It's actually getting quite gray. There's a lot of cloud rolling in now, especially down that way. I think that's towards the south, southeast. Okay, running out of footpath. I don't know if there's one on the other side of the road. It doesn't look like it, so I'm just gonna have to walk on the grass. And I've got a footpath again. I don't really know how much further I've got to go. Like how much longer it's gonna take. It's about two o'clock now, I think. Ten to do something. So nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I've probably got maybe another couple of hours of walking. For some reason I got a craving for soda water. Yeah, those clouds are getting very dark. I actually kind of hope it does rain. Oh, if I if it does rain though, maybe the uh, the eyes will wash off. Well, it's a little bit bleak along here. I love that there's a excellent footpath here. They got these big rusty metal walls here very attractive. Anyway, obviously it's to stop the noise as much as possible from what are birds doing? From um, Bad Desert Road going to the house behind. Getting a few drops of rain now. Look at what that noise was on top of the umbrella and was this rain. Well, this is it, the very southern boundary of the city of Brisbane. Right there's Browns Plains and that's Mount Lindsay Highway. So this is literally where I'm standing, right here is where Brisbane ends, the very most southerly part of Brisbane city. Well, I suppose really the boundary is in the middle of Browns Plains Road, which is behind me but I'm not going to go and cross the road but yeah this is it this is the end of Brisbane right here I'm getting to peak hour now kids are coming home from school so very very noisy that's it that's the journey had a really good time making it I hope you had a good time watching it uh, please subscribe to my channel leave a like and a 
comment if you wish. I'll see you again on my next adventure.